My next guest is a pretty prominent EDM DJ producer. I mean, he does it all pretty much at this point. And it's funny because I've followed you online for like forever now. And it's so cool that we're actually getting to talk now. Yeah, finally. Awesome. Uh, Famba's got a new single out. It's called Still Call You Mine. Welcome to the show. It's Famba. What's up? Hello. Thank you for having me. Dude, where, where are you? Are you in like Toronto or are you on the East Coast? I am in Toronto and I chose probably like the historically worst time to move to a new city ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably not the time you want to be in a new because it, there's nothing to do. It's like, you know, yeah, I'm in Toronto now. Oh, did you go? To, no, it's closed. Oh, it's but like, did you go to the, uh, it's closed. No, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty boring. I mean, I moved here this time last year, so last January. Okay, so, um, you so I had a little bit of it. I had like three months of like experiencing it properly, but it was winter and like I really wanted a good summer, but you know. It's okay. Yeah, it is what it is. Are you living in like a like a high rise condo building or? Yeah, yeah. I live in the twenty eighth floor of my building, so the view is incredible. Like we get to see we like um, outlook the entire like north part of the city, so you see oh, like the whole city. I love the view, but high rise buildings have their price to pay with elevators. Yeah, is it one of those situations where it was like more expensive for you to have the view versus like the other side of the building? Because that's what I don't know. That happened to me. I was living in downtown Montreal and in my condo built. So on one side, you had like the like the office buildings. And then on the other side, you face the east portion of the city where you had like the Jacques Cartier bridge that lit up at night. And then oh, yeah. six flags, like the roller coaster, the fireworks show. So you sit on the balcony. I was on the 36th floor of my building. And in the summer, you know, we'd sit on the on the balcony and you'd see all the things. But it was two hundred dollars more expensive to be on that side of the building. Then on the side with like the crap. Yeah, prob view. Probably worth it though. Yeah, totally. And the cool thing is that right outside down below, that's where they have the, uh, it's called the Cartier de Spectac. So they have mm -hmm. like the jazz fest and they have like festivals there like all through the summer. So like till 2 a.m. you'd hear like stages blaring on Fridays and Saturdays. I mean, that's kind of nice if you're into it. You get a free show, go on your balcony, have a beer. Yeah. yeah and the old retired couple next to me were pissed. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Oh, well, talk about this new song. So still call you mine. It's Brandon. You're collaborating with a couple of cool peeps on this. You know, how did the song come about? So this was actually the first Zoom session I'd ever done. And I was like dreading it. Um, I don't know if I was dreading it, but it's just like, when you know, when you have to do this new thing, you never really want to do it. Like yeah. nothing beats writing music in a studio with friends. Um, but I mean, it, it went really well. You know, they're great guys. Did I would it go consider well? them. It went, it went pretty good. <laughs> um consider them friends now you know we wrote the song in under an hour um i do a bunch of writing with them now we have like two other songs with the same writers cool. on the ep but yeah i mean it just came together so quickly and i think that's kind of the nature of these zoom sessions too um they just go quicker because you're like you know you're not like going to get sushi and you're not like chilling <laughs> like wasting time at a studio you know yeah you could pocket a little bit more of the advance because you know you're not you're not booking studio time yeah it's, it's great <laughs> it's uh, you know money uh, food <laughs> although i will say it, it does um it does kind of like suck not to be able to vocal produce um that's one of my favorite things to do is like yeah when... but you know you could be on facetime or like you said on zoom and you yeah know, you can still do it hmm. it's just like harder to like do that but but why the the singer like he just crushes it like he doesn't need vocal producing no it sounds great on this new tune i mean uh you know like that vocal performance i i really like the production on this song because to me it sounds very uk radio like it sounds like english dance music well Almost thank like, you that was the goal <laughs> yeah, it sounds like I mean, i'd be driving like in a cab in london and hear like capital it's famba it's called <laughs> like you know it's very like it's, it's very uk radio sounding and i love it that's that is like my favorite type of music like i'm a huge fan of european music so yeah i've definitely been trying to make it um so i'm glad that you could hear that in it uh, and a lot of a lot of the new music is very uk house influenced and like uh early 90s like uh american house influenced but yeah, yeah, you know, like Technotronic and all that stuff, you know, even a lot. One of my favorite guys is Jax Jones, who has that really early 90s. So good. Sound, I'm a though, big you know. fan of Jax Jones. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's like it, it all depends on the samples you're using, right? Yeah. So if you're going to go back and use the Technotronic, you know, the 808 uh, or 909 hi hat, you know, it's it's kind of what you do with it at that point. I do. Yeah, I've been using the 909 drum kit aggressively. Maybe too much. Maybe I have to stop. <laughs> it's, it's those hi-hats, man. That's 
it's nothing beats them. They're just so good, so crispy. Can't beat it. Where do you? Who are your influences when it comes to producers and songwriters? Because you know EDM is kind of different from every other genre of music, but not at the same time. Because if you're a rock guy, you're going to be inspired by you know Eddie Van Halen and uh, Bon Jovi. And if you're EDM, you know it's it's you're going to go back to the roots of what house music was. You know, do you go back to disco or are you really yes. proper? Okay, so you are. Yes, I'm a big fan of disco. Um, I like a lot of like modern disco. I've been very inspired by this um, guy, S.G. Lewis, who's mm-hmm. doing this really cool like modern spin on disco. Um, but I always listen to disco and like early 90s um, house music. That, that's where I get a lot of my inspiration because that's kind of what I grew up on. So I think it's good to take from that side of things. Um, like when I'm trying to gain inspiration, I try not to listen to what's happening now just because... Hmm. You know, if you if you follow these trends, it'll probably not be a trend by the time the song comes out. Well, that's the thing, you know, trends die out, whereas if you're being inspired by timeless music, the odds of you having a timeless song, it's kind of greater. Exactly. And that, that's kind of my outlook on it. I, and I honestly just like old music. I think it's great. And there's something special about it because it's kind of stood this test of time. So that's what makes it special. So when you say you're a big disco guy, like, are you sitting in the, you know, standing in the shower, belting out Dancing Queen or like? <laughs> I love ABBA. Uh, Earth, Wind & Fire, probably one of my favorite. Um, Boney M. I love some Boney M, like Euro disco stuff. Mm. And some of the more like underground, like disco cuts. I have some like vinyls laying around and some like old, um, old stuff that's like able to be sampled sitting on my hard drive that I dig into constantly. Yeah. Talking about ABBA, man, that talking about Dancing Queen specifically, man, that bass line in that song is just so good. It's nasty. Like, it's so, so good. funky and so much groove, you know? Yeah. There's a video of that bass player, actually. I forget what his name is, Bjorn or something on, on YouTube. Probably Bjorn. <laughs> They're all Bjorns. I mean, come yeah. on. You're either Max Martin or you're Bjorn, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and there's a video of the guy on YouTube like playing the bass part, and he's old, like he's in like 70s now at this point, but he's still there, like playing the record, you know. <laughs> you can't get in a better education in music. Like those old school musicians are just so proficient in their craft. It's like, you know. Where I mean, you- I would I wish well, there was a resurgence of that type of band thing. I mean, I, even though my music is not bandy, but I still love bands and like the whole idea of just like jamming with a bunch of friends on stage like it's magical yeah so do you have a classical like education in music or was listening to music your education listening for sure yeah i i uh, i'd never taken like a music lesson up until recently as a couple months ago i started um wanting to learn piano a bit more Hmm. just kind of brushing up on my theory because i mean i learned from the school of youtube right which is like a good school, but it's not a great school. Automate filter in Pro Tools. <laughs> yeah, or like, you know, <laughs> music theory for dummies. Right. How to transpose C chord. Right? Yeah. <laughs> How do I play A minor everywhere? Yeah. And there's so many resources now. You could literally just go on YouTube and learn how to play it, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's how I learned to play. But there got to a point where, um, you know, you can only play basic chords for so long. So, so did I mean, you I, I, producing music with no musical background, like as a like a, as a musician? Um, I played guitar. I self-taught guitar, but I wasn't like I'm not amazing at guitar. I mean, I can play it decent enough. Like I can record it and everything, but I'm not going to tell anyone I'm a great guitar player. Right. I'm exceptionally decent at most instruments. So what made you want to sit down and say, all right. I want to become a music producer. Uh, I love the music. Like from a young age, I was, uh, I was like a rave kid. Mm. Which, and I lived in like a place where that was not normal. Like oh, I lived like, in a ver- like a city or like a town outside of the city um, where country music was king. Dude, you're welcome to my town. I live on a native reservation just outside of Montreal. And it's just like, it's a total country town. Like you pull up to like the Legion and like you hear like Pop a Top again by Alan Jackson. Yeah, again. the Legions, man. <laughs> you can't beat small town Legions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I was a big fan of the music and I'd always want to get involved with the, the scene however I could, but I didn't really know how. Mm. Um, so then I went to a festival and like fell in love with like the atmosphere and like the whole vibe of, of electronic music and I was like okay like this is so I think my dog is like puking nice <laughs> um Herbal. so I, yeah so yeah I just loved the the scene and then ever since that night I was so inspired and I went home I downloaded Fruity Loops like read the manual went on YouTube did whatever I could to learn um 
that was how I learned how to produce. And then the DJing came from, that was a long thing of like going to set up for promoters and doing that whole thing until I, you know, got into my first gig. And then, yeah, a lot of the stuff that everyone has to do to get into it. Yeah. So it really was like the school of hard knocks where you, you know, it, she, I, yeah, I dropped out of school like way too early to pursue it too. <laughs> I went to school for like a year, dropped out. And I was like, no, mom, I'm going to be a DJ. Like you dropped out of high school or like? No, no, you're in college. Yeah. yeah. I was like, high school, that, that'd be a great story. Stick with the, I dropped out of high school part. <laughs> True. <laughs> no, so you really did, you know, pay your dues coming up in the scene, trying to get somebody to give you a break and, you know, it paid off. I, I did. I really did. I, I did all the things that you have to do kind of thing. Like I had no like kind of help, I guess. Right. So how do you go from just being, you know, small town, you know, surrounded by country music to going to raves and becoming a producer at some point to now being signed to a major record label and having songs on the radio, you know, talk to me about this, the process of getting that to happen. Cause that, that must be surreal for a kid from a small town that just didn't really think that any of this was possible. Yeah, it, it was very surreal. It was um, very crazy to think about too. It all started when I had this song called Vibe, which was actually the very first pop song I ever made. Um, but up until that point, I was making techno and very underground tech house music um and like disco house so i never experimented with pop music but i wanted to get into it mm -hmm. um so my manager at the time had sent me this song and he's like hey like you want to like produce this and i was like sure so i took the um the song which i didn't write the lyrics for i just produced the beat um and then we put it out and on his label and then somehow that caught the attention of sony norway when then Sony Norway signed the song, which is so weird thinking back. Norway. On it. I know. And then Norway's yeah. closer to the East Coast though, Norway or Toronto. <laughs> yeah. I think I don't know which is closer. I feel like Toronto's closer. Toronto's probably closer, but yeah. Probably. Just probably a little bit. Norway, like you know, people in like Oslo were bopping to it at like a ski club or something. It was it was yeah, very strange. And then the song like blew up in norway like actually blew up and it was it went gold in norway and um, dude you're big in norway that's apparently awesome. <laughs> apparently um yeah and then it just kept streaming and streaming i got added to this big playlist and now it has like 27 million streams and it was like it wasn't meant to do that like it was like it was like hey i'm gonna try a pop song we're gonna put it out and see what happens like no one anticipated that happening <laughs> like actually no one did um and then from there my a and r now will um caught wind and then i did a remix for a show which they really liked and then they asked me to do a remix dude, man, from montreal ddo he's a great dude yeah i've worked with him a bunch um and then after that um i did a remix for tyler shaw and then they were like hey can we like listen to some original music and then the first song i sent them was wish you well mm. And then they're like, okay, we'll sign this. And then the second song I did for them was Swear to God. Um, yeah, I then... remember when Wish You Well came out because that's when I, I think it was around that time I started following you on Twitter, uh, on Instagram, because you hang out with like the, you know, the Neon Dreams guys and, and all those dudes. So I, I saw you and I started following you, checking out your DJ videos and stuff, and you, you announced you're releasing the single. So the day it comes out, I check it out, whatever. And I loved it. So I sent it to our music department. I was like, guys, like, check this out. You know, like, it's pretty damn good. They're like, yeah, okay checked it out and then they added it and i was like boom yeah and that was oh cool. thank like, you yeah so that was kind of like your first like you know radio smash i guess you know yeah it was that was so cool it was, i mean like the first time you hear a song on the radio it's like you never think you're gonna get that you know yeah and then when it happens it's like it doesn't even feel real radio is still so important man because a lot of major artists are still you know living off those radio spins you know spotify it's, pays crap apple music pays zero it's you know radio is still so important to artists you know it is and it all like not only like is is the pay good but like what you get out of it it's like you know yeah. people who would really never listen to your music might discover you through the radio and it's this whole like audience of people that you might never get well, that's um, it. Then, you know, if you if your song is playing on a station like you know, like the beat in Montreal, for example, you'll get like a thirty five year old office worker. You know, she's sitting in her cubicle listening to the radio, and she goes and hears your song, and it's like she wouldn't necessarily have been exposed to it had she just been going through a Spotify playlist or something. So, market research says that radio is still the number one for music discovery in twenty twenty one. 
Absolutely. And it will continue to be like that. I think so for sure. Yeah. So what's going on next? You know, I mean, like you're releasing these singles, you got some cool tunes out. Do you plan on releasing like a proper record at some point, like a collection of tunes or oh, yeah. are you just going to do the, the Beatles route and keep doing singles? So I have, uh, I have an EP coming out um, called Wishes Volume 2, which is like a continuation of Wishes Volume 1, um, where it's definitely going to be more of a body of work compared to the first installation. Um, I'm pretty much done it. Now it's just kind of figuring out when the songs are going to come out and like which ones are going to be bundled together. Um, but yeah, I'm very proud of it. It's definitely the favorite music I've ever made. Hmm. Um, I don't, it just feels a bit more personal and it's it's all house music, it's dance music, it's high energy, it's good vibes. So I'm, you know, I'm really happy with it. So it's all your influences kind of, it's like a culmination of everything that you grew up loving and it's it's on tape. Exactly, yeah. You got some like cool collabs on there. Like who you working with? Like who's singing? Who's singing these tracks? Or are we gonna get you singing? I uh, I'm not a good singer. You don't want me to sing. <laughs> I just like to write the lyrics and, and or like co-write at least. I never usually write songs by myself, but okay. um, I'm where, not a good singer. Where does your lyrical inspiration come from then? I don't know. Mm. It just comes. Yeah, I never like think about it. It's like I usually just like sing melodies and you know once a melody kind of comes out that might inspire some kind of lyric or story or something, you know? So, so it's melody first for you. And then, cause there's different songwriters have so many different, you know, approaches to it. You know, one of the biggest songwriters of all time, Desmond child, he's written, you know, songs like uh, I was made for loving you by kiss and mm -hmm. living on a prayer Bon Jovi. And he was saying that all of the major hits that he's had, he had the title first and then they wrote around the title. Yeah. And that's, that's a very old, like old school approach, which I love to do as well. It kind of depends on on the day, you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a title, sometimes I have concepts on my phone, like a note of just like different concepts spanning pages and pages if, you know, if I need some inspiration. But yeah, it's always different. Mm. How's the, you know, this is kind of cliche, but I'm curious to know, talking to like a proper, you know, guy that's on the scene and stuff, how's the pandemic affected your business in a sense? Cause you know, you'd be out normally playing shows and stuff. And it's like, how, how are you surviving through this? Um, I'm lucky I just signed a publishing deal. Right. So that's that, advance. Yeah. So I've been, <laughs> that, that was my saving grace. If it wasn't for that, I'd be in trouble. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have royalties that come in, um, periodically, but you know, they're, they take months to come in and it's, you know, yeah, it takes but yeah, it's a tough time year. for, for being a DJ or any kind of artist. Cause I mean, almost all of our money comes from live from live show. Yeah. So it's a very testing time for a lot of people in the music industry. And I hope everyone can, you know, make it through. Yeah. What's the best way for fans to support you right now? Like, you know, go buy merch or buy your music, you know, like what's the best way to give back to the artist? You know, I just listen to my music, stream it. Um, I, I should do merch. We've been, we've been working with a merch company. It's, it's coming. We need so, FAMBA merch. You, you know what you need? You need like a baby Yoda, but it'll be like FAMBA. Like you need like a mask, <laughs> a little mascot. Yeah, like a little plush doll. Like, oh look, what's that? Oh, it's a Famba. You know, yeah. Like, oh, it's it's my Famba. You know, like come on, a little baby Famba. They would fly off the merch shelves, man. <laughs> That's funny. Or just your face, like a plush face, like a cartoon version of you. Yeah, or a poster or something of just like just my face. Yes, <laughs> we yeah. want to put that up in their house. <laughs> I would. Why not? It'd be hilarious. <laughs> Man, this is great to catch up, man. This is cool. Uh, you know, it's so cool to hear about your different influences and, uh, you know, get to know you and stuff. So when uh, once this song kind of, you know, hits it big and everything, when can we expect, you know, more from Famba? When, like, what's the next step for Famba? You know, when shows come back, are you going to be hitting the stage? You're going to be going on tour? Like, what's the ultimate plan? Um, so for now, it's just music. I'm just focusing on music. Um, you want to be a really... studio guy or do you want to get out like on the stage and, you know, Oh, I know. I definitely like playing shows. It's probably like my favorite thing to do, but you know, for now, all I can do is make the music. Um, I just want to try to get all of my musical, you know, juices flowing and out while I can. And then when like touring starts up, hopefully I'll have this arsenal of music to start playing out to everyone. Right. How are you producing music? Are you working in Pro Tools? You're working in Ableton? I use Logic, um, but I'm learning Ableton. Nice. Because Ableton is just better. So, what's your favorite synth plugin? Ooh, I my favorite synth. I have a hardware synth uh, that I use, a Prophet Rev Two. Old school. 
Yeah, I love the profit. And I also have a Juno um, on my desk right now too. So I love analog gear. I'm a analog big analog gear's guy. Way to go, man. That's awesome. It is. What about drums? What, what are you using for drums? Uh, always the 909 drum machine. That's my go-to. Epic. So how do you take the sounds from a 909 and make an original sound out of it? You know, because you kind of recognize the 909 snare, but if you're a fan and you're a producer, do you want to put your own personal touch or spin on it, or do you want it to have that iconic sound? I, I want the iconic sound for sure. I never, I never change them. I just love the way they sound. Yeah. Nice. It's interesting listening to the EDM music because there's so much stuff going on, you know, within the mixes and stuff. You know, where do you get the inspiration to, you know, do like all the chopped up pieces and bits and stuff? Right? Are you sitting there dissecting bits and trying to create something rhythmic out of it? Or like, where does your production inspiration come from? It, a lot of trial and error. Sorry, my dog is just like <laughs> eating stuff here. Look, this is dog what's dog. happening right now. Nice. It's like, play with me, damn it. Uh, um, it's trial and error for me every time. Like, I'm constantly just like, sometimes I have like an idea in my head. Very rarely it works out. It's usually just like literally chopping stuff up until it sounds good or like yeah. hitting my face on the keyboard until something good comes out. Like, it's, yeah, I, I definitely throw everything at a wall until something sticks. I guess that's what you got to do, right? You do, yeah. If you want, if you want to experiment, you definitely have to make some bad ideas. So, give some advice for somebody that's watching this right now and is thinking about getting into EDM music production, is a fan, and you know wants to start creating beats. You know, what's what's your best advice? Where where should they start? YouTube, the school of YouTube is key. You can literally learn everything on YouTube. Um, but what I've been telling people actually, when people ask for advice, is like just play with it have fun with it like just open this new software and like make beats and like once you're stuck then go to a youtube tutorial you know like get stuck first before you go to watch these videos because you can get stuck in a loop of just watching tutorials over and over again yeah. never implementing them so it's all yeah i find you just like go have fun with it and then when you're like oh i don't know how to do this then go look that up yeah no that makes sense man that's great well, dude, you've said it all. This is uh, this is great. First time chat. We'll have to do this again. We will have to do this again. Hopefully in person. Yeah, yeah. Next time we're in Montreal, we'll party. Hell yeah. Sweet. All right, man. Well, check out the brand new single. It's called Still Call You Mine. It's available wherever music is sold. They also catch it in Montreal on the radio at the Beat 92.5. I love the Beat 92.5. It's a great radio station. Absolutely. You know? So check that out. And uh, yeah, Fambo, go follow him on the social. Support new music. Good Canadian kid, man. I mean, come on. You can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. I love it. Well, thanks a lot for chatting, man. Appreciate it. We'll catch up soon. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.